and sea and land were to them the same. The rough grey ocean was the same as meadowland green and plain. Thought that be good, Oduanan, it will not make the heroes return, said Kanash. They are gone without regard for me, and without honor to me, and without power on my part to pursue them or to force them to return this night. We shall try another method on them. Since Yan one did not stop them, said the druid, and the druid froze a grey ridge sea into hard rocky knobs, the sharpness of sword being on the one edge and the poisoned power of adders on the other. Then Arden cried that he was getting tired. I'm nearly giving over. Come you, Arden, and sit on my right shoulder, said Nows. Arden came and sat on Nows' shoulder. Arden was long in this posture when he died. But though he was dead, Nows would not let him go. Alan then cried out that he was getting faint and nigh well giving up. When Nows heard his prayer, he gave forth the piercing sigh of death, and asked Alan to lay hold of them and he would bring them to land. Alan was not long when the weakness of death came on him and his hold failed. Nows looked around, and when he saw his two well-beloved brothers dead, he cared not the story of Deirdre. Illustration 3.jpg Whether he lived or died, and he gave forth a bitter sigh of death, and his heart burst. They are gone, said Duan and Gaka drew into the king, and I have done what you desired me. The sons of Osinch are dead and they will trouble you no more. And you have your wife hail and hold to yourself. Blessings for that upon you and may the good results accrue to me, Duanan. I count it no loss what I spend in the schooling and teaching of you. Now dry up the flood, and let me see if I can behold your dream, said Conatra. And Duanan Gakadru and dried up the flood from the plain, and the three sons of Osinch were lying together dead, without breath of life side by side on the green meadow plain and Deirdre bending above showering down her tears. Then Deirdre said this lament, Fair one, loved one, flower of beauty, beloved upright and strong, beloved noble and modest warrior, fair one, blue-eyed, beloved of thy wife, lovely to me at the trysting place came thy clear voice through the woods of Ireland, I cannot eat or smile henceforth, break not today, my heart, soon enough shall I lie within my grave. Stronger the waves of sorrow, but stronger is sorrow's self. Conatra. The people then gathered round the heroes' bodies and asked Conatra what was to be done with the bodies. The order that he gave was that they should dig a pit and put the three brothers in it side by side. Deirdre kept sitting on the brink of the grave, constantly asking the grave diggers to dig the pit wide and free. When the bodies of the brothers were put in the grave, Deirdre said, Come over hither. Now, my love, let Arden close to Alan lie. If the dead had any sense to feel, he would have made a place for Deirdre. The men did as she told him. She jumped into the grave and lay down by Nows, and she was dead by his side. The king ordered the body to be raised from out of the grave and to be buried on the other side of the lock. It was done as the king bade, and the pit closed. Thereupon a first shoot grew out of the grave of Deirdre and a first shoot from the grave of Nows, and the two shoots united in a knot above the lock. The king ordered the shoots to be cut down, and this was done twice, until, at the third time, the wife whom the king had married caused him to stop this work of evil and his vengeance on the remains of the dead.